Huff of saltwateraquarium.com. In the last video, you saw the journey of my reef tank being moved, and in this video, I am going to take you through the process of breaking down my two large tanks, my 75 gallon, my 180 gallon, with my cowfish Frank, and we are going to show you what it's like to break down those tanks and get everybody ready for the move. Okay, the process has begun. So, Frank is very easy to catch. So he was the first one that got pulled out of the tank. My goal is to get all the chromis out and then get the wrasse and the yellow tang out and get this tank drained uh, as fast as possible. Wish me luck. Check it out. I caught all of the chromis with relative ease. It went so much smoother than I anticipated. Now, I adopted those guys a few months back, but I'm actually going to be rehoming them because during feeding time, even feeding them separately, they kind of harass Frank, my cowfish here, um, and he tends to be a little bit stressed out when he is trying to eat because those chromis just get to the food so much faster. So they're getting a new home, but Frank and the yellow tang and there's a melanaris wrasse in there as well. They are all coming with me and until it's time to move tomorrow and drive, they're gonna be in this big heavy duty Rubbermaid tote. Okay, my 180 gallon tank is almost completely broken down. My pumps, um, everything is unscrewed and taken apart and stored for the journey. Um, I still have a bunch of sand in here and water that I need to get out because it's adding a lot of extra weight. Um, but as you guys know, I did get a huge new cleanup crew a couple months back and it would be a shame for them to die. So what I'm doing is going through sifting out the tank or sifting through the sand with a glove. Of course, please do not ever do this without a glove. Um, and looking for any live snails or hermit crabs that I may have missed. Um, I don't want anybody to get left behind, especially if they've survived this long, they deserve to continue to live. Um, so yeah, here are a few little uh, stragglers who I have found. There are either hermits or snails in there that I will put in that tote over there. Additionally, I like to save some various sized shells because some of these hermits do get a little bit larger and that way they'll have something to live in. So I'll keep those shells as opposed to throwing them out. All right, pardon the mess. So this is the sump for my 180. Got it sitting on two blocks of wood temporarily because in the moving truck, the stand will hold everything. It's overbuilt so we can handle it. Um, right now we've got the tank on pieces of wood as well and we're going to transfer the tank to the dollies and use the dollies to move it out and into the truck where we will have to lift it onto the stand. When it comes to catching the fish, I prefer to use a large container that they can fit in as opposed to trying to catch them with nets. Nets can be stressful and well, stressful for you and stressful for them because you just end up chasing them around with a net and you're not usually typically successful. If you move really slowly and you have a large bucket, you can kind of herd them into the container and take them and a lot of water with less stress. So in less than five minutes, I've got everybody that was in the tank into my temporary holding uh, large tote container. It's hard to see, but there are two clownfish in there, my sailfin tang and my giant hermit crab. This is just temporary holding. They will be moved into five gallon buckets for the road trip, but I've got some of the live rock that's in there for the bio media. I also have um, bio wheels in here. I've had those in the tank soaking and uh, marinating in the beneficial bacteria for probably two and a half, three weeks, if not longer. So um, that is that temporary holding container. Now, um, there wasn't that many rocks in this tank, so I still have to break this down and kind of pull it out and make sure there's no little uh, hermit crabs left. But all of my live rock for this tank is gonna go in these big five gallon heavy duty totes with a little bit of water for the trip. And um, yeah, that's it. 
here. I do have, oh, something else I forgot. I do have this little connector. I've got a spare connector so that I can unscrew this, um, put the, I've got a CJ pump down here, so I'm gonna stick the CJ pump inside my tank and attach it all to a hose and then pump, drain the water from the tank into the trash can. Or not the trash can, the <laughs> toilet. Okay, so as you can see, the water level has gotten a little bit too low for me to use my um, turn pump to pump out. So I am just using um, uh, the hose without the pump attached to it. I'm letting gravity do its thing. So I've got this run outside. So because where I have it running to outside, it's a lower spot. So gravity is naturally going to pull water up and through the hose and it's going to empty the tank. Now, because I don't wanna sit here and wait for this to slowly empty, I have kind of cleared a little area of sand and wedged the hose in against the um, giant boat decoration. And uh, so hopefully I can step away and do other things. So one of the things that I'm doing for all of the tanks and the buckets that I'm moving everybody in, with the exception of the live rock, is I am putting some of the Dr. Tim's First Defense. It is an immune booster, booster and stress reducer. So um, you don't need to add it, like a ton of it, a little goes a long way. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some of this. All right, so in this bucket, I have my sailfin tang and those two clownfish and the big hermit crab is in the middle. Now, the reason for that is because anytime you're in the road, I don't want it to be super bumpy and him to bounce around and accidentally hit a fish or anything like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's very small, it's not ideal, but I don't want him bouncing around um, and it's not happy for him. So I've got my first fence. Um, like I said, this is a six gallon bucket. I've probably got about four gallons of water in here, so a very small dose. Super easy. Now, I know you guys are probably looking at that sailfin tang thinking, oh my gosh, she takes terrible care of him. Um, he's actually had that scarring since he was a baby, and that's how I ended up with him because uh, they were going to flush him down the toilet and throw him away. So he's had scarring like that his whole life. It's Okay, so um, you can't really tell, but this is an old salinity bucket. I believe these are six gallons. Um, right now I have an air pump that is plugged in that is stuck through the hole, but uh, once the travel starts, these um, portable air bubblers, they're powered by D batteries. Um, I'll stick that through the top and close the lid. That helps to reduce the amount of splashing that is occurring, but give you a look real quick. So here is Frank. There is a Melanaris wrasse in there as well as a yellow tang. Oh, you can see the yellow tang right there. Um, they're not super happy. Obviously this is not ideal, but um, it's, I, I like transporting them a lot better this way. Now you can see there's some decoration in the bottom. Like I mentioned, I don't like adding a lot of heavy things in the bottom to crash around um, just because like, I don't want to hit a bump and something knock a fish over it. That being said, the ones that are in here right now that, um, face sculpture that's in there and there's like two columns on the bottom those are very very lightweight um, and they're kind of wedged in there so that they don't move um, if it weren't like that if I couldn't wedge them in I would not have them in there but uh, this guy this bucket already got its dose of uh, first defense so um, soon as uh, it's time to load them in the car I will switch out the air pumps and they'll be good to go now, I'm curious, I don't know about you guys, um, what you would think to carry in a travel emergency bag. So I've got, because I'm going to be staying in hotels overnight, um, I've got this bag full of stuff. So I've got my test kits here. I've got um, the air pumps will go in this bag. In the bottom of the bag, I've got spare batteries. I also have um, Dr. Tim's one and only in here. So one and only 
for when I get to my final destination and aqua cleanse. So this aqua cleanse is kind of like um, Seachem's Prime if you have ever used that. So this is what I'm going to use for this trip. Um, my first trip I also had a bottle of Prime because I was um, dropping that reef tank off with somebody. Um, I just left that bottle with them so they can dose. Um, if they needed to. Now, as you can see, I do have, so I've got my um, seaweed in here, my nori, and then I also have my uh, TDO Chroma Boost large pellets because that's what everybody eats. That being said, I will not be feeding anybody because they're gonna be in buckets. I'm trying to keep the ammonia low. Now fish can go without food for a day or so, um, even a couple of days. Um, and in addition, I have been feeding really, really heavy leading up to this week. So I'm not super worried if they don't eat for um, a day or two. They're stressed, that'll probably um, add to uh, their loss of appetite. But once I get stable and um, in a solid place, I'm gonna give them some food. Now something else that I'm gonna keep with me, I've got my refractometer in here. And then I also have two heaters. So I've got a 100 watt Eheim heater. This is going to be for when I get set up. I've got big black tote bins that I'm gonna set up. It's gonna be their temporary home until I can get the tank set up. And then I also have a 50 watt Eheim heater that will be for the buckets. Um, so yeah, there's that. I picked those up this morning because I wasn't sure that I trusted my heaters. Like this one right here, it was starting to get way too hot too fast. Now something else I'm bringing is I've got a um, hitch for the back of my car. So these two um, five gallon water jugs are filled with um, fresh made salt water that I made last night. Um, so in case I have to do a water change while I'm on the road, I've got salt water with me. That way I'm not driving around trying to find a local fish store to have water. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up everything that I've got packed for the fishes road trip slash move. But I'm curious, leave a comment below. Let me know if you've ever had to move fish. Um, let me know what all you brought along with you. Now, this isn't Frank's first move. He's actually moved cross country before. I think it was a four and a half day drive. And this is a very similar procedure to what I did then. So cross your fingers, wish me luck. Okay, everybody is in the car and ready to go. Those trash bags, two of them contain the five gallon buckets, one of them with Frank and friends, and the other with the large hermit crab Tomatoa and all of the fish that were in his tank. There really was no other space to put them, so let's get this show on the road. So you've seen over the course of the last two days what it takes to break down my two large tanks and get them ready for an 1100 mile multi-state move. Not only am I moving fish tanks, but I'm also moving a mini pig. And things absolutely did not go as planned. Please make sure you stop back by for the next video where I'm going to be talking about all of the things that you should be prepared for when it comes to moving your fish tanks and your corals. Because if you can be prepared, you're going to be more successful and hopefully you don't encounter all of the crazy things that happen to me. This has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of SaltwaterAquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.